every day. Every day. I still do. Every day. I sit there and go, oh, God, what have I done? Why did I do this to myself for? <laughs> you know, I take all these risks and I do all this stuff. And then, you know, the old saying, once you've made your bed, you've got to lie in it. Yeah. That's what I do sometimes. Like, I moved to the country, so I moved away from where my children were living. And that's another story. Where we might get to that. But, um, and I wake up sometimes, we went into lockdown with COVID-19. I didn't see my daughter from February last year to November last year. I didn't see anybody I knew in my life. Everyone was two hours away and I was in an old house, freezing old house, in a town where I didn't know anyone, with a job, a new career that I wasn't settling into very well and I'm here alone for most of last year. Every day I sit there and think, what have I done? Why did I do this? Am I over my head? Why did I make this decision? Now, I'm going to jump in here. Great question, Doug. Really good question. Great answer. So, Heather, again, like um, what you just said, like doing the, the three jobs and there's a problem sometimes where people set out with a goal and they'll start doing two or three jobs, then whatever happens, I don't know because I'm no expert in psychology or anything. I'm just expert in my own life and the people I'm, I'm surrounded by, yourself included. Um, oh, I nearly started crying then. <laughs> you, you are such an inspirational person. I'm telling you, your emotions bring me to a point of like, my God, this woman is incredible. Thank so, I, I, yeah, it's so true, Doug. Like, Doug's been through his journey, but I know he's sitting there listening to you going, wow, I need to get my act together. And I say that to myself. I, I can do a lot more than what I'm doing, even though I'm doing a lot for other people. But your inspirational story and what struck me then was people head out to do that and they say, I've got this job, I'm going to get that. And then all of a sudden it stops and they're on the treadmill 10 years later still working two jobs, wondering why they've got no money, wondering why nothing's changed because mm. somewhere that goal diminished. The goal was still there, but something happened here where it didn't seem possible or you know, people who, who've climbed Mount Everest. Now, if you were a mountaineer and you, you would have got to Mount Everest because that's what you would have set out to do and you would have done it, you would have got to the top. Yes, you would have been elated, but you would have been in pain. You would have been exhausted. You would have had injuries. You would have had accidents on the way, everything. But people only look at the achievement like, oh, wow, I want to be like that. Yeah, but you need to see what happens between A and the end of the alphabet. Because yeah. there's so much trauma to any athlete, um, any person who's achieved amazing things. They've gone through stuff where they could have just quit and given up. And, and that's where your story is so powerful is that you never, you may have slipped, but you never let go of that vision of the end goal. And that was only that goal. There's plenty more goals after that. That was just one, one mile post uh, you had to get to and you got there and then you had the next one, right? Right. Let me, let me tell you, uh, Doug, as well, um, mm -hmm. probably my ex-husband, Travis, he actually turned this van I bought into a camper van for Connor and I, right? He's a very talented builder. I probably, I was inside the house. Uh, inside our, our marital home and because um, I lived with him for six months again before I went around because I didn't want to pay rent because I needed the money. And I walked out of the house and I said to Travis, don't worry about it. Put your tools down. I'm not going. This is bullshit. I can't do it. I don't know what I was thinking. Forget it. Don't do it. I'm not interested. We're not fucking going. I'm over it. And he looked at me and he said, you are going. I am going to build it. Pull yourself together. And get on with it. And I went, fine. What a great guy. What a great guy. <laughs> that is I yelled great. at him, fine, oh, whatever, fine. My <laughs> son's in the background laughing. And, um, and then the day comes, I'm sitting in this van and, I, and I'm sweating and my guts is churning and I had no belief in myself. Uh, Travis came with Connor and I for a little bit of a short stint for the snowy mountains and stuff. And when it was time for Connor and I, to just go off by ourselves for a bit, dread, filled with dread. And I was saying to Doug earlier, Andy, I'm one of these mm. people that I can see the end result, but 
but I don't often see the small steps to get to that until they're happening. Oh, yeah. When they're happening to me, I go, oh, this is happening to me, and you have to deal with it, right? Yeah. That's the kind of person I am. But that's why I think when I see an end result, I go for it because I go to myself, well, I know it's going to get there if I just go towards it. Yeah, and, and that's see, that's powerful, Heather. Um, it's like maybe a bit of a, a strange analogy, but um, as a young kid, I never looked after my teeth. And from the age of 11, I was always trotting off to the dentist by myself. And on the way to school where I lived in Victoria, Baldwin, I walked to school. I'd go to the dentist before school. Back in that day, the drills were all on pulleys and big big cables and the needles yes. were I'm lying but as a fisherman says the needles were like eight foot long yes. and I could see this needle but you know what I learned about myself and I've had broken relationships uh, those people who know me uh, have beautiful children from those relationships we're all connected but I was a troubled kid from the day I was born right troubled for my whole my whole life but I don't regret any of it I, I, I regret the sadness I caused, but I don't regret any of it because of what was created out of that. My beautiful children, grandchildren, and my journey here by myself now in LA. And, you know, like there's times where you you go, the end result, yeah, my teeth started to play up as I got older. I've had fillings. I've had this. In the last three months, I've spent six grand on my teeth because yeah. it's catching up. I've had root canals. I've had... Uh, bone grafts and I had a root canal only three days ago and I'm still on antibiotics and I'm like oh, you like but I grip my teeth and get through it and then believe it or not yesterday I ate something and snapped the tooth because the oh. old filling went and I went oh my god here we go again but the end result is when he's finished my teeth will be great yep right but yep. I have to grip grit my teeth now and just get through it and yep. do what i got to do so that's anywhere in life whether you said something really important uh, a, a millionaire said this um uh i think it was in uh, rich dad poor dad millionaires pay their people who, who sorry people who are wealthy and smart with money pay their bills first pay your bills first get your bills out the way pay them first Work hard and then put money away. And if you continue to do that, you will reach a goal that you want. But if you then make that a conveyor belt, oh, let's pay the bills, put this away, not doing anything, and say, then that's all that will happen. And if that's okay, if that's what you want. But if you want to step up into life, I want better teeth. So I've got to go through some pain. I've got to work a few extra hours to cover things like that. But I want the end result. Or else I stay like this and go, ah, oh, I've got a tooth missing here. And it, you know what I mean? And it's the same with what you said, same with what Doug's been through. He could either stay at 320 pound, obese, unhealthy, waiting for a heart attack to knock on his door or diabetes and say, hang on, uh, it's diabetes here. We'll come first and then heart attack's not far behind me. Oh, um, but Doug, yeah, Doug chose not to do that. When we started coaching, I got a friend on board to help him with diet doug went from 300 plus to 200 pounds You're on you, doug. And, That's great. yeah yeah and That's great. and he's now quite handsome gentleman he doesn't look like a blown up balloon um <laughs> and he gets recognized because of what we started together with relentless and unstoppable was simply me interviewing him saying let's tell people about your little journey and then it grew into this and now he walks around arizona and people go hey you're that guy off relentless which is so awesome for a kid Very who's got impressive. high functioning autism and yep. you know he he can deal with abuse i mean you know on social media, people, you got the mean people. He just deals with it now. Uh, he can he can not react to people. He used to know going, oh, yeah, look at you. You're still fat. And he goes, oh, thanks for that. Nice compliment. And then he just leaves it alone. So your story relates to all of us. And the power about your story, which is so clear, is it's not going to be easy. No. But it will be easy if you focus to go, this is what I've got to do. I've got three years to do these amount of jobs to get where I want to go. And let's jump to the end of your story. You've got your own beautiful little house. You have a new job which you train so hard for. Can you tell us about your job and your home? So um, 
I come back from my trip around Australia and I had nowhere to live. I had lived with my mom and uh, I was crossing the Nullarbor Plain Dug in Australia, which takes you pretty much from South Australia right across the desert into Western Australia. Hmm. And I saw all these white lines on the Nullarbor Plain and I found out that was the flying doctor's landing strips on the Nullarbor Plain. And that's a service in Australia where they fly to remote areas and rescue people uh, who are sick and hurt and stuff. And I thought to myself, I think I might go back and do nursing. 